Hello dear chess friends, I'm Grandmaster Grigov Grigovov and today I'm going to present the most important theoretical positions in the end game Rook and Pawn versus Rook. This lecture uh, will be a preparation for our workshop dedicated to the practical Rook end games and uh, why this uh, topic is so important. Actually, uh, when you know uh, the basic uh, theoretical positions, uh, you will be able to easily evaluate uh, different uh, kinds of uh, simplifications. In other words, uh, you will know uh, what you are playing for. Uh, as um, you have already seen uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, Grandmaster Petr Bavnoudov uh, made another uh, preparatory was, uh, which was dedicated uh, to the battle between the rook and the pawns, uh, rook versus pawns and games. And I hope that uh, today's lecture will be a logical sequence. So uh, let me uh, remind you that those of you who uh, participate in the workshop uh, will get uh, the PGM version of uh, the lectures. Uh, Rook versus uh, pawns and rook and a pawn versus rook, uh, and of course in the PGN version uh, you will uh, you will have uh, many more examples. Not only the examples that uh, have been covered uh, during uh, the video. So uh, let's uh, start uh, with the most important th theoretical positions. Uh, it will be very difficult uh, to provide. Uh, extensive coverage it's impossible to cover everything that is important but uh, it, now I will try to uh, examine at least uh, the most basic positions that uh, you should definitely know and uh, just to be sure that uh, we are on the same page I will start with some very very basic stuff uh, and then uh, we will proceed uh, with uh, some more complicated positions. So uh, the first position is uh, is very famous, uh, and uh, here White is winning uh, by applying the so-called uh, bridge technique. White can build a bridge uh, by means of Rook F4 in this position. This is the easiest way to win the game, but um, as we are going to see a bit later, this is not the only way to uh, win the game. So, uh, before uh, starting uh, with this um, uh, position, I just want uh, to make some very important clarification. What uh, we need in order to build a bridge? So, there are uh, actually uh, two main conditions. The pawn should be on the seventh rank and also uh, the distance between the pawn and the, the opponent's king should be uh, at least two, uh, two verticals. So uh, if uh, these conditions are completed, we can uh, build the bridge. And uh, here the most uh, straightforward way to continue is rook f4. And actually, uh, let's tr let's uh, let us try to uh, understand the logic behind this move. Uh, so, if uh, White starts with King e7 immediately, uh, then Black can check King d6 once again. Check King e6. Check, and uh, it turns out that uh, the King cannot escape. For for example, if uh, we play king d5 in this position, then rook d2 again, and uh, okay, um, you can see that uh, had the rook been on f4 in this position, rook d4 would have been possible. Therefore, we start with rook f4, and now, uh, okay, after rook c1, uh, we can already uh, start executing our maneuver. So king e7, rook e1, king d6, rook d1. Okay, this is the uh, the straightforward line. Uh, a bit later, I will show something else. Uh, so king e6. Here, actually, white is threatening uh, to play rook f5 and rook d5. Uh, just uh, moving the bridge uh, forward. So... Uh, if rook d2, then rook f5 and rook d5, white is winning. Uh, 
okay what should uh, black do he can uh, proceed with this uh, check but after king d5 rook d1 uh, rook d4 and now uh, white is winning so uh, after the exchange of the rooks um, it you can see that the king is not uh, able to catch the pawn therefore it was important to be sure uh, that the distance between the pawn and the king is two verticals so uh, just uh, to mention this is not the only way to win uh, another another technique uh, that uh, allows you to win the game in such positions is just to play rook a1 followed by rook a8 and rook c8 and then uh, the king uh, runs away so we basically take the control of the 8th rank king f7 rook a8 rook c1 rook c8 and then the king just runs away and black uh, can never stop the pawn so this was the this was a basic position that you, everyone should know and then of course we can proceed with a bit more complicated examples let's take a look at some simple positions in which uh, the pawn is on the sixth rank and uh, the opponent's rook uh, is defending via the eighth rank so in this position uh the, we have a knight pawn on the sixth rank and uh, we we should show say that uh, when uh, the knight pawn is on the sixth rank the rook of the weaker side uh, can uh, can be on the eighth rank on the last rank and uh, the defense will be successful uh, there is no way that uh, we can force the opponent's king out of the corner for example uh, you give a check king b8 once again you give a check but then uh king a8 and this is just a draw uh, because you cannot force the king out of the corner uh, just for the sake um, of uh, quality i would like to say that if for example in this position black plays king c8 uh, this is already lost because we will uh, eventually win by using the bridge technique that was uh, examined in the first uh, example so king a7 rook c7 the king should uh, uh, go to d8 then b7 and here okay how we can win after rook a2 first of all we should make sure that the distance between the pawn and the, the opponent's king is at least two ranks therefore rook c1 rook d1 and now uh, the, the move rook d4 is winning the building the bridge it works exactly in the same way as it did in the previous example so quite a simple stuff uh, but uh, you should know these basic positions let's uh, take a look uh, at this position uh, what happens when we have a bishop pawn on the sixth rank this time this time uh, the the defense on the eighth rank does not work so uh, the rook uh, cannot defend the position had the rook been on h1 uh, black to move could have saved the game by giving giving a check because uh, when the pawn is on the sixth rank there is no shelter for the white king uh, but in this concrete uh, position white is winning and this is a very important must know theoretical position uh, okay well, first of all uh, we play rook b7 giving a check and thus winning uh, an important tempo what uh, what can black do king c8 or king a8 uh, these moves are basically uh, leading to the same thing after king a8 then rook a7 and c7 just winning the rook and if black goes for king c8 then rook a7 tra threatening rook a8 mate so king b8 check and then rook a8 so uh, this is of course a, a very simple example but it's an important to understand that uh, when the bishop pawn is on the sixth rank uh, the rook of the weaker side cannot uh, be on the eighth rank that this this kind of defense is not sufficient the same uh, is valid for a central pawn 
So once again, uh, had the rune, the rook been on h1, and uh, black to move could uh, have made a draw uh, by the simple uh, rook c1. But here, uh, the passive defense does not help. So uh, rook a7. Uh, the, we we can use basically the same idea just like in the previous example now the threat is rook a8 mate so black should do something and uh, the obvious move is king b8 and now uh, once again this check and uh, we can see that the same pattern uh, which was uh, seen in the previous example uh, if uh, black goes for king c8 with the idea to block the pawn then d7 and rook b8 and okay, we are winning the rook, just like in the previous example. But uh, after king a8, uh, rook b1, now uh, nobody uh, can stop us uh, f to play d7, just putting the pawn on the seventh rank. And uh, since the distance between the pawn and the, the opponent's king is uh, two rank, uh, two verticals, uh, okay, we can win by um, by means of the bridge technique so uh, it, it, it's actually pretty pretty straightforward to win let's uh, let us uh, just um, make some moves rook c8 king d7 rook c2 king d8 then d7 and here okay um, it's uh, the same way rook b4 is uh, winning uh, very easily then king c7 uh, king d6 and okay we are uh, going to use the bridge maneuver and now uh, we can uh, start looking at some a bit more complicated positions uh, but before that i just want to mention something uh, when the pawn is on the seventh rank on the sixth rank sorry and the rook of the weaker side is on the seventh rank there are uh, some interesting drawing uh, patterns which are based uh, on the stalemate so uh, here black can play rook a7 in order to put the rook on a1 and uh, if white goes for king f6 then uh, you can just pause the video uh, and think for a while actually the uh, the draw uh, is not so difficult to find okay i hope uh, you got it uh, correctly uh, black can play actually rook f7 and this is uh, a draw because of the stalemate arising after e takes f7 okay if uh, white goes uh, for king e5 then rook f1 and uh, this is a rule of thumb that you should know when the pawn is on the sixth rank the rook of the weaker side uh, should go behind the pawn and st start uh, giving checks from behind why because when the pawn is on the sixth rank there is no shelter for the opponent's king so this is a very basic uh, knowledge so the, uh, guys don't forget the the rook on the seventh rank can uh, can do very well in the defense and now uh, we can uh, we can take a look um, it's it's one position which is a bit more complicated here uh, this is uh, the so-called uh, philidor position it's white to move this time and now i'm going to show a very important defensive technique okay uh, let's uh, imagine for a while that it's black to move let's say that white goes for rook b7 in this position uh, and it's black to move the the most straightforward way to make a draw is of course the sixth rank defense rook g6 and actually um, i'm sure um, all of you know this idea uh, the idea is pretty much simple you you just keep the rook on the sixth rank uh, doesn't matter rook h6 rook a6 uh, and whenever the wh whenever white uh, pushes the pawn then the the rook goes to the first rank and as i have uh, already said uh, there is no shelter against the checks from behind so rook d1 is possible rook e1 uh, okay the king uh, cannot hide in this position but what happens what happens if uh, here it's white to move 
and white plays king d6. This is a very uh, interesting uh, position and uh, something that you should know. Here uh, we should um, apply the, the so-called defense from behind. Here, uh, okay, first of all, let's uh, figure out what uh, white wants to achieve in this position. And in order to understand that, uh, we can just make a simple move like rook chuan. And here it turns out that actually white can queen the pawn by force. Rook a8, check. So only move, then e6. And okay, after e7, uh, the pawn is going to be uh, promoted. Of course, after king f6, uh, not e7 immediately. First, we give a check and then e7. Okay, and then uh, black can uh, do nothing uh, against the e8. So this is a very, uh, very important idea. Okay, uh, then what? Uh, if we want to prevent uh, black from executing, uh, white from executing uh, this idea, uh, we have basically uh, one very op logical option. For example, rook d1 check. But this move is unfortunately losing. It, it is not sufficient uh, to save the game. And why, how can white win? King e6. Now uh, we are threatening to checkmate. King f8. Check. King g7. And now king e7. And here, uh, okay, white is uh, winning after e6. Uh, as we are going to see a bit later, if uh, black goes for rook b1 e6, um, checking uh, from the side uh, is not uh, enough because uh, there is no enough distance between the rook and the pawn. So now the distance is only two ranks. And uh, as we are going to see, uh, at least three ranks are needed for the successful defense. So now uh, white can play king d6 uh, basically and uh, the idea is just e7. Uh, and black can do nothing against uh, the idea of e7. So if king, f8, king f6 uh, you already know the winning technique. First of all check on from f8 and then e7. Okay white is winning and if uh, black keeps uh, giving checks then king d7, once again e7 is the idea, check, king c6, and you see uh, that now the distance is not enough. If the rook was on a7, let's imagine that our rook was not on a8 but on b8, then uh, it would have been a draw because um, black could have uh, given a check from a6. But now uh, white is winning because the only square is rook e7. The rook, unfortunately, cannot uh, leave the seventh rank because the pawn will be pushed. So rook e7, king d6, rook b7, e7, and white is winning. So uh, here, this move, rook d1, is not enough uh, to save the game. And remember, in this position, there is only one uh, defense, but uh, it's largely uh, sufficient. The, the rook should go behind the best pawn, rook e1. And actually, the idea is very simple. Uh, we want uh, just to prevent the pawn from advancing. And uh, we, you can clearly see this idea in this line. If white immediately gives a check, then king f7, and it's not possible to push the pawn since uh, the rook is cooperating with the king and uh, black has uh, managed to take the control over the e6 square. So uh, this is uh, the first uh, important element of our defensive strategy. We put the rook behind the pawn. And uh, okay, if white goes for king e6, remember uh, in such end games, a rook and a pawn versus rook, uh, there is a very basic rule of a thumb. Whenever uh, you uh, 
you consider king d8 or king f8 always remember that the king should go to the short sides of the board okay short side uh, depending on the pawn of course so king f8 the king uh, will go to g7 and uh, uh, then the rook can occupy the wrong side and of course uh, there will be very annoying uh, side checks for example the perfect uh, position would, would be a uh, king on g7 and the rook on a1 because the rook can give checks from the side and the, the king uh, that does not uh, disturb the rook if the king goes to the wrong side then uh, side checks will not be sufficient because uh, the black king will actually uh, disturb the work of the rook so check king g7 and here uh, what white can do actually there there is only one idea only one possible idea his uh, plan should be based on advancing the pawn but how to advance the pawn the most uh, straightforward way to do uh, so is king d6 threatening e6 and uh, at this point uh, you can stop the video and think uh, on the position uh, it, it will be very good if you can find uh, black's defense on your own it's not uh, difficult at all okay i hope uh, that uh, you have managed to find the correct answer this is king f7 uh, once again we see the same pattern the rook and the king work together they uh, take the control of the e6 square and white cannot uh, make any progress and actually guys this is the essence of uh, our defensive strategy we uh, our defensive strategy is defense from behind so uh, white cannot make a progress for example let's uh, take, let's uh, give a check then king e8 king e6 and once again uh, we have the same position which side to choose of course the short side king f8 uh, if white waits um, you can wait uh, you, you can do the same rook e2 if white gives a check then king g7 and if king d6 then of course king f7 but let me show something else. For example, white can try to play a move like rook e8 in this position. What is the idea? Uh, king d7, uh, just to make sure that the pawn is protected, and then e6. But in this case, uh, the, the, the white rook is no longer uh, placed on the a file. And here, of course, uh, we, our rook can occupy the wrong side. And you see that now we have the perfect defensive construction. The king is on the short side while the rook is on the wrong side. And uh, white can do nothing against all the side checks. If king c6, uh, then okay, uh, you can even give a check, but king f7 is, uh, is a simple move because uh, your king uh, will uh, go just in front of the pawn and the position is an obvious draw so very important uh, very important uh, position remember that this position is a draw regardless of the move order if uh, it's black to move the draw is very simple rook g6 but if uh, it's white to move uh, okay uh, after king d6 we are uh, we can make a draw by means of rook e1 only move of course but uh, it's enough for a draw so uh, now let's take a look at another application uh, of the same principle uh, you will see that even when we have a bishop pawn on the on the fifth rank the same idea is uh, works well for example, white plays king c6 in this position, threatening checkmate in one. You can just pause the video and try to figure out uh, what is uh, the most uh, precise defense. Okay, not the most precise defense, but the only defense. Of course, I'm sure uh, you, uh, you didn't... Uh, 
take too much uh, time to think on this position because uh, quite obviously uh, the king should go to the sh short side just um, leaving this the long side available for the rook and uh, now uh, you can see that with a bishop pawn actually the rook can even go to g1 and the distance between the the black rook and the white pawn uh, will be sufficient uh, there, there are three verticals uh, which is sufficient for a draw uh, for uh, here at this point i want to show uh, another idea as well if uh, the king goes to d8 white is already winning and uh, th there is a very important maneuver that you should know in order to win the game so uh, we should uh, make sure that the pawn uh, will be advancing and uh, the best way to do so is the typical maneuver ch rook h8 followed by rook c8 uh, we have seen this maneuver the same pattern in positions with a central pawn but it didn't work um, uh, quite well uh, but now uh, white is already winning because uh, the king is on the wrong side and uh, side checks does not work in this position for example let's uh, suppose rook c2 king b7 okay threatening to advance the pawn check king uh, c7 rook b1 c6 and now actually uh, we're going to win by using the bridge technique rook uh, h8 rook h2 rook e2 just to make sure that the distance between the pawn and the king is two verticals and then okay king c8 followed by c7 okay this is uh, winning so uh, after king c8 uh, the only move is king b8 of course what uh, what can white do check king a7 and uh, of course uh, white can try mm, to advance the pawn by means of uh, king d6 but uh, you can pause the video and just demonstrate uh, the essence behind uh, our defensive strategy defense from behind king b7 king b7 just preventing uh, the pawn from moving and after check okay we uh, we take the same square and after king c6 king b8 everything uh, uh, everything will be mm, the same so uh, if uh, white uh, plays uh, a move like rook d8 just waiting then uh, rook c2 uh, we can wait as well and if king d7 king d6 sorry then king b7 uh, the same defensive strategy works very well once again okay now uh, let's take a look at positions with a knight pawn uh, just uh, let me go to to the essence okay we can start from here this is actually the game Viktor Gavrikov against uh, Kaido Quartz as uh, some of you uh, probably know um, Viktor Gavrikov is my former trainer so uh, here we we are going to have a position with a knight pawn on the fifth rank and uh, you will see that this time the same strategy uh, does not work check was played in the game g5 rook g4 rook g8 okay white takes the pawn rook f7 and rook a rook b7 so in this position uh, the same strategy defense from behind does not work when we have a knight pawn and uh, we will uh, understand why uh, so uh, here just uh, just to mention that if uh, the rook was on the eight rank we already know that this is a draw uh, because um, white cannot force the black king out of the corner this was one of the basic positions that we have seen uh, before but here it's impossible to transfer the rook to f8 for example after rook f1 uh, then uh, okay the pawn end game is completely winning for white so uh, after rook b7 king f8 uh, black is actually forced to play king f8 and uh, that's the reason why uh, white is winning so when we have a knight pawn uh, the 
the king cannot go to the short side because the short side is too short after king h8 then rook b8 mate uh, so th that's the reason why uh, white is winning uh, with a knight pawn and after king f8 uh, i will kindly ask you to stop the video and uh, consider different options for white um, i i think that uh, you already know the winning pattern yeah i hope that uh, you have uh, found the solution we use uh, pretty much the same maneuver first of all check and then rook g8 we know this maneuver from the previous example uh, putting the rook by putting the po the rook in front of the pawn we make sure that the pawn will be advanced the concrete idea is king h7 followed by g6 so rook g2 king h7 king f7 g6 and okay uh, nothing can stop uh, white from promoting the pawn uh, let's suppose that we have uh, something like this and uh, okay white is going to win by means of the bridge technique very easy win uh, remember uh, the same strategy defense from behind does not work when uh, white have uh, when uh, we have a knight pawn it works against a bishop pawn and against a central pawn, but not against a white pawn, a, a knight pawn. When uh, there is a knight pawn, uh, the rook should be on the eighth rank, and then uh, the position is just a draw. Uh, in the PGM file, uh, you will find uh, some interesting uh, exercises featuring this idea. And I will. Uh, I will show uh, two more examples uh, just to uh, just to make sure that you really uh, uh, understand the principle of the long side and uh, of the short side in rook and games. Uh, as uh, we have um, uh, stated on a number of occasions, the king should occupy the short side while the rook goes to the long side in order to deliver checks. And uh, here is a classical position with a bishop pawn. The, the king is on the short side and the rook is on the uh, long side. There is enough distance between, uh, between the rook and the pawn. So uh, the, the, this position is an easy draw. Let's, uh, let's see how. Uh, rook b7 check. We start giving checks. Rook e7. And here uh, there is something important. Okay, uh, uh, rook uh, rook b2 or rook b1 are just enough for a draw. But in general, the most precise uh, defense is just to take the control uh, of the eight rank in such positions. In, in this way, uh, ideas like king f8 followed by f7 uh, will never be possible. In this concrete position, uh, actually, uh, you can allow uh, king f8, and it's not a problem. For example, th there is this typical idea after king f8, king g6, white can play f7, but then uh, black has the typical king f6, uh, remember this defense. And here, uh, actually, uh, the threat is uh, check, and after rook e8, rook b7. So if white uh, plays king g8, then uh, this uh, check uh, saves the day. And it turns out that um, black, white cannot make a progress. But uh, for example, if you play uh, rook b6 in this uh, position, uh, then um, okay, uh, it's white is actually winning. And uh, I think that the reason is obvious. King f8, king g6, f7, and now the same strategy does not work because if king f6 then king g8 and okay the rook is on b6 and not on b1 had the rook been on b1 the move uh, rook g1 uh, would have been possible but in this position uh, it's impossible and uh, white is winning therefore my practical advice is to always uh, put the rook on the 8 rank just to be on the safe side so rook b8 and here uh, if white uh, plays the straightforward king g6 uh, 
king e6, sorry, then king g6, and after f7, king g6, king g7, or, okay, just a check, sorry, just a check, and then king g7, this is a draw. Uh, so, uh, after check from g7, king h6, and uh, we start uh, delivering, che delivering checks from the side, it's uh, an obvious draw. So uh, the most uh, tricky continuation here is rook e6, and this is actually a trap. Uh, putting the rook on the sixth rank is very tricky in such positions. And where is the trap? If uh, black uh, plays the automatic rook b7, then uh, king f8 is actually winning. Because uh, what is the reason? The typical king g6 followed by rook f7 would, would not work here because of f7. And this is actually a check. And this was the entire point behind uh, putting the uh, rook on the 6th uh, rank. And now, okay, after king uh, h7, uh, white, white is winning, uh, let's, let's say rook e1. And then, uh, and then just... Uh, king e8 or uh, check and uh, king g8 rook h1 king g6 king g8 uh, white is winning if uh, black starts giving checks then uh, we will be in time to uh, to play rook e6 so uh, don't forget uh, about this move rook e6 uh, there is a trap uh, always pay attention when your opponent puts the rook on the 6th rank but, and here the most straightforward uh, way is just to keep the control of the 8th rank and white can do nothing here if king uh, if he uh, he plays uh, for example king e7 then king g6 if f7 king g7 and uh, black has a perfect coordination in this position he can just uh, start delivering delivering checks from the side and the position is an obvious draw so uh, rook e8 should be played maybe but now rook a7 and here since the white rook is not on the sixth rank uh, king f8 can be met with king g6 this is a draw so king e6 but we uh, keep delivering checks once again check and when the rook uh, goes to e5 uh, then rook a8 once again you can put your rook on a1 but i prefer to keep the rook on the eighth rank just to avoid any problems and here there is a last important moment white gives a check on e7 and now you can just pause the video and uh, try to find the best defense for black yes uh, i hope that you have uh, managed to find the move king h6 uh, keeping the king on the short side uh, and uh, avoiding uh, av avoiding a famous theoretical position for example if instead of king h6 you play king g8 then white can play king g6 and we get uh, uh, this important theoretical position that has been examined uh, in, in our first examples. White is winning by means of rook g7, then rook h7 and f7. So, king h6, the king is on the short side, the rook is on the long side and there, there is no problem whatsoever. For example, he plays rook d7, check, we can start delivering checks, the king is approaching and white cannot make a progress. So uh, the position is a draw as uh, you can see, but uh, there are some uh, interesting um, subtleties that you should remember. And now uh, at the final, uh, we will uh, take a look at a similar position, but this time with a central pawn. And you will see that uh, uh, the same uh, principles uh, pretty much apply in this position. For example, uh, now you can see that the, the king is once again on the short side, the rook is on the long side, and the, the distance between the black rook and the, and the pawn is uh, enough. We have three verticals, uh, which are quite a sufficient distance. So check rook d7, where to put the rook, where is the most precise square, of course, 8 rank. Just keep the control of the 8 rank. 
So rook d8, rook a7, king d6. Once again, we give a check, and you can see that the same uh, strategy applies. But whenever white gives a check on d7, which square we should choose? Just like in the previous example, uh, the king should go forward. Uh, and uh, then we proceed uh, by our uh, by giving uh, side checks with the rook. If the king goes to f8, then after king f6, white is winning uh, because we land in another uh, important theoretical position that has been examined before. Of course, uh, had the rook uh, been on a1 instead of a8, uh, black could have made a draw by giving checks from behind. But here it's impossible and white is winning. Another interesting subtlety is rook d6. Uh, I hope uh, you remember um, whenever your opponent puts the rook on the sixth rank, you should pay attention. And uh, for example, there is this famous game uh, between Aronian and Karolsen. In the very same position, uh, Karolsen played rook a7, which is basically losing after king e8. Why? Because we know that uh, when the white rook is on the 6th rank, king f6 does not work instead of, in, in, in view of e7. And then um, white is winning. And strangely enough, uh, this, was, uh, also, uh, this position was also seen in another game by van der Steren against another Dutch player. Mm, and here uh, black played uh, rook b8. Once again, uh, we're winning rook d8, and this time uh, the distance between the rook and the pawn is not enough, only two verticals. So rook b7, king d6, rook b6, king d7, and white is winning. e7 cannot be stopped. We know that whenever black goes for king f6, then rook f8 followed by e7. So guys, what is the only drawing move? Uh, in this position after rook d6. You should uh, think uh, in the same way uh, as uh, we were considering the previous position. Of course, king g6. This is the only move, but it, it, largely enough for a draw. And uh, white cannot um, make any progress. Whenever he plays rook d8 now, you can give a check. And here, king e8 is not a problem because of king f6. So uh, th these are some of the most important uh, positions that uh, you should know uh, in the endgame. Rook and pawn uh, versus rook. Of course, um, this coverage is by no means... Uh, extensive. Uh, many more positions uh, can be um, uh, ex examined and uh, I will make sure that in the PGM file you will get access uh, to even more important uh, positions. Uh, for example, um, uh, different uh, another defensive strategies uh, will be uh, included in the PGM file. Uh, you will have many exercises uh, featuring uh, the defensive strategies that I have just covered. And uh, I r remind you, uh, all the participants in our uh, master class dedicated, um, sorry, not master class workshop uh, dedicated to uh, practical rook end games will get access to uh, these uh, PGM files. Thank you for your attention and I hope to see you uh, on the camp. Bye bye.